So here's where we're at so far. Um, I cleaned the carburetor out somewhat. I had it on. I got it to run um, by cupping my hand over the carburetor, um, sort of choking it in a sense. Um, it would run. However, that tells me it's not getting enough fuel. So the carburetor still needs a little work. It's still got some, uh, probably some clogged holes in the pickup tube that picks the fuel up out of the bowl. That would be my guess. Um, as luck would have it, this is a K-series Kohler engine. There's all kinds of them around. They were very popular. Um, so the parts are fairly widely available for these. I can get a aftermarket carburetor for this for like $40. So it's actually, it's hardly even worth messing with the carb that we have because it's, <clears throat> it can be quite, uh, quite tedious. Uh, there's a lot of little tiny holes in there and <clears throat> you can mess with them a lot and still not get very good results. Uh, so I have ordered another carburetor. I probably still will clean the other one just to show you that it is possible to do it. Um, if you don't feel like buying another one, you want to tackle that, that's entirely up to you. But uh, for the purposes of getting this running and running well for, for this season, so we could try it out, uh, I have another carb on the way. So, in the meantime, we're going to check out some of the other suspect items here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. See this wire right here? That's your power wire to the coil. See that tape on there? Anytime you see that, you should be suspect of that and have a look at it. I found that same thing on the ground wire for the coil and look what I found. It's just twisted together. That's no good guys. We don't want to do that. We want that connected properly, so we're going to replace that wire. We'll probably replace this one as well, just so that we don't have any problems with that. There's a few other poor connections here. They're starting to break. Wires have got brittle. So we're going to look into that. We're going to deal with that while we're waiting on the carburetor. We do, we do know that this engine runs now, so we will carry on while we're waiting for the carburetor to arrive. Okay, so right now guys, we're gonna strip off some of these <clears throat> unnecessary items that, that are on here. Um, we have this clutch affair right here that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, would have been for, um, Attachments, you know, lawnmower deck, maybe a snowblower or whatever other attachments they, they would have had for this. Um, we're not going to need that, so we're going to get rid of it. Um, there's some other idler pulleys down in here. <coughs> Pardon me, we're going to get rid of all that. We don't need it. It's unnecessary stuff, it's just going to get in the way. So we're going to go ahead and strip some of that stuff off now while we're waiting for some of the uh, engine components we need. So let's get to it then. Okay guys, I want to show you something real quick here. <clears throat> we're right in the midst of removing some of this extra stuff that we don't need. And we've removed that clutch affair that was for running the mower deck or snowblower or whatever have you. I want to show you this in here. This here <clears throat> is a little switch so that when you engage that, I've unbolted it, but when you engage that PTO or that uh, mower deck or whatever it is, that switch moves like so. See how it moves? So what that does, 
I don't know if you can see, but the ground wire or one of the wires goes to the starter solenoid. With that engaged, it will not allow you to start the tractor. So we're going to remove that switch. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to remove any of this stuff if you don't want to. Um, just the purposes of what, what I'm building here, I'm going to do that. Um, that can cause you trouble. If that switch craps out on you, it won't, maybe won't start and you don't know why. It's too many things to try and troubleshoot, I believe. Now, like I said, you don't have to remove any of this stuff if you don't want to. But we're going to remove all this extra stuff, that being one of them, because that can cause you trouble. And it, and it might give you a bit of a headache to try and find out why it won't start. Um, so we're going to eliminate that for the purposes of simplifying this whole setup. And that's what we want. We want to keep this simple. Well, if you get to the track and it won't start, you have very few things that you need to look at in order to get it going. All right? That's what this is all about. Keep it simple. new carp mounted. Um, I fixed up a bit of the wiring that was not so good. Um, these wires here going to the coil twisted together. I mean it's it's okay for testing purposes but you don't want to leave it like that. That's the way I found it. So I replaced that. Um, also I don't know where it went. The coil, replaced the coil wire. It had tin foil wrapped around it. Again, for troubleshooting purposes, it's one thing, but to leave it that way, not a good idea. So I replaced that as well. Um, got rid of that uh, starter switch affair I showed you in one of the last clips. Um, it doesn't allow you to start the the motor if the motor deck uh, PTO is engaged. So we've, we've done away with that. <clears throat> That's just going to cause you trouble. You, you want to simplify the wiring as much as you possibly can. Um, one wire at a time, guys. That way you don't get confused. Um, if you're not real familiar with this stuff, it's, it's not very complicated. But just do one wire at a time. That's the best way to do it. So now that we've simplified that, and we've got the new car mounted and all that, we're gonna fire it up and see if it'll run. So let's give it a go. Sounds pretty good. We're gonna lower it down and take it outside and take it for a little spin and see what happens. <clears throat> okay guys, so we just took our little Johnny for a spin here and it was moderately successful, I would say. Um, doesn't feel like we're getting enough RPM. I just bolted that carb on out of the box didn't adjust anything, didn't do anything to it. Um, so I probably need to tune it in. The, the uh, chances of getting it tuned exactly the way you want it are pretty slim, I would think. So you may have to do a little adjustment here and there. It didn't seem like it was getting quite enough fuel um, in the higher gears. It was bogging out a little bit. Uh, however, uh, it moves and it runs pretty good so it's just a matter of fine tuning from here as far as that goes um, so we're going to get into that a little bit we've got a few other things to do uh, hitch wheelie bars um, so we're going to carry on <laughs> 